Bum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum ba Welcome back to Absolutely Marvel at DC. My name is Benny. That is Hassan, and we're going to talk about the mid-season. We're up to episode six. We're going to talk about the first six episodes of House of Dragon. The House of the Dragon. The House of the Dragon. We, I know we call no it House on of Dragons. I feel like we call it House of Dragons, just like amongst the friends. The Targaryen like the Show. I was going to call it that. <laughs> the Targaryen Show. The Incest Emporium, if you will. <laughs> so, okay. Mm. I'm going to kick us off. I'm going to start this off right here. We're going to talk about all the episodes kind of like encompassing and where we're at, because we can't hit beat for beat, not with this many episodes and this much we stuff that's going on. Yeah. The yeah, time have- jumping, the time jumping has been wildly confusing for me. I will not lie, I've needed to read recaps when I'm done and before I start to see where we are in the timeline. And no, I'm not talking about episode five's 10-year jump. That was relatively easy to understand. What I'm talking about is every episode is jumping six months to a year to two years apart, and they just kind of try to catch you up on what you missed between the beats. Yeah, which which makes it very challenging for me to follow along what's happening. And I'm following along. This isn't like Betty's doing 80 <laughs> things. It just happens in the background. <laughs> you can't have House of Dragon in the background. Then then we get to episode five. We jump 10 years and they introduce, I believe it's seven children mm-hmm. all into the cast. And we're and they treat it like, yeah, you know who all these kids are. I'm not having as I bad sp- of a time as Benny is with this. I spent <laughs> 15 minutes trying to figure out which one was Aegon. Like Aegon's the oldest, man. <laughs> well, I know that now, but I couldn't figure out which one was the oldest. Like, <laughs> so yeah, Aegon the Conqueror is such a like prominent character in Game of Thrones mythos that if there's a character that's supposed to take the throne or like is set to be powerful, they'll name him Aegon, and right. they, the rest of them don't really matter. The rest of the kids, no, don't but the, like, it, like the, it just keeps time jumping. Like, oh, she doesn't want to get married. Here's the wedding. Okay, now it's ten years later. She has three kids. Let's learn all their names in a hurry. Because we got it's to. So, I mean, it's an anthology show rather than a long running series. So it's, it's jumping. It's an anthology it's, show, but it's not at the same time because it's all one through line of what's going on, which is the yeah. family infighting and problems and incest and all that stuff. The, the incest isn't the problem with this show, though. <laughs> it's the best but I, part. I also, felt, I also felt getting to episode six and nothing super significant has happened outside of the inner political turmoil of the family. See, and it's episode six. I've now realized I'm not really watching Game of Thrones. I'm watching a reality TV show where the winner of the season gets to be the king. <laughs> that is what Game of Thrones is. That's the whole concept of the show. Benny, I, I'm going to disagree because I'm enjoying myself. My biggest issue with the show is uh, is character writing. I think they, they created several plot holes uh, for no reason because all they had to do was put it sh- shoehorn three scenes into a couple episodes before to make their plot make sense. But now they've gone too far with a plot that doesn't make sense. And I'll elaborate on that sooner. But I don't mind the time skips I my biggest I, issue let me, with let that me is the recasting. I, I want to clarify something I'm, I'm complaining about him in a sense that it was difficult for me to follow I'm yeah. not saying I disliked it right right, right. I, I kept watching all the way to episode well, six and, not and how, begrudgingly were you I could watching have easily these said, week Hustin, to week? I'm not watching this how are you uh, watching no, these? No, so I watched like episodes one through three back, uh, one by itself, two and three back to back, and then I was trying to catch up so we could do this review, so I watched four, five, six pretty much back to back. That's a crazy thing to watch because it's so long, but I watched them all week to week. They might have been easier to digest week to week because if you're not, like, if there's a clear pause, and then if they do a time skip, it's it's very, very, like, exposition-y. They're like, it's been nearly three years since I've seen you, Rhaenyra. It's like, it's like yeah, it's been four months that. since this event happened in the last episode. Episode of the but show. I was taking that very nonchalantly <laughs> until about episode four or five, where they were like, "It's been like two years since Damon conquered," and I'm like, "Wait, didn't we just leave off Damon conquering?" Yeah, like, no, I, <laughs> I, I had, I had less of a hard time keeping up with that because I think I was watching it week to week. I would see like in a giant vacuum because none of the characters other than the king, who progressively looks more and more like fucking Smeagol, <laughs> he's are the aging. only one who keeps aging. Damon yeah, looks wh- fine. I'm which, like, it's also been ten years. I'm for Damon. firmly, um, no disrespect to Olivia Cook or I don't remember her name is who played the new Rhaenyra and new Allison Hightower I think the originals were great and they should have just put them in older makeup I really think that recasting yeah. was a terrible idea the one who looks like Allison they do look more alike the one who looks like Rhaenyra Millie Alcock is an incredibly like specific looking person she has very specific mannerism she has very specific vocal quirks and she embodied this character really well like the, the world fell in love with this version of Rhaenyra I think before the show came out they called her like ugly uh daenerys for so long which is ridiculous because she's gorgeous but th- then it came out and they're like oh no we're obsessed with her and then they recasted her 
and this new character does not have any of the power and like kind of uh, angst and a little bit of not betrayal. What's the word for it? You're talking about the Rhaenyra actress? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, the, I, I'm not digging the new one that much. Yeah. Andy she doesn't Darcy? have as much tact as Darcy. the other one did. The other one felt very like she was on point. But she we've felt also she was, jumped, she's almost playing a completely different version of the character because up until the time jump, Rhaenyra was just rebellious about everything. Didn't want to get married. Let her do her own thing. She's still going to be queen. Blah, 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 blah. That was her whole character arc. The time jump. We, she's broken. She's yeah. just spitting out kids, waiting for her, her son to take over. That's all she's doing at this Which, point. Which, that's not what she's... Like, like the, the thing is, I think that's the actress's portrayal of it. And we'll have to let her have more scenes to eventually, like... Because, like, at the end of this most recent episode, we definitely have a moment where she shows old Rhaenyra for a second, where she's like, look at you. She goaded Allison into cutting her in front of everybody. She did that on purpose. She did yeah. it. She was like purposely bidding her. So we'll, we'll circle back. One of my, my biggest issues with the show right now, um, is in the writing of Sir Kristen Cole and in the writing of Allison of Hightower, Kristen Cole, if they wanted him to be this hyper fixated honor obsessed guy, they should have planted that when they introduced him or in the two episodes of him being around. They never plant him as a man who is so obsessed with his honor because there are very few people in Westeros who are like that. So it's very yeah. easy to characterize like, hey, it means a lot to him that he has this cloak. It means a lot to him that you've risen him above his station, right? And they don't do that. But then they have him spiral in that one episode after he fucks Renera to go crazy. He goes, he goes absolutely insane and then he kills a guy. Yeah. Um out of nowhere it, it doesn't track right and then for allison's characterization a lot of people are saying what's well, because she really loves her children that's why she's the way she is now like she's worried about her children and that's why she's being evil and, and terrible and whatever well up until these two episodes with the older children when she when she had the children as babies they would scream and cry and she would hand them to someone else they never yeah. had a moment where she'd hold them or kiss their head because they could have had both right they never had a moment where they're sitting with young allison really really like being, you know, uh, like a mother, like a really paternal motherly figure. So to jump forward and say her motivation for why she's an absolute bitch these days, why she's the worst. The 10 year jump is just yeah. weird. Every motivation seems to have shifted or changed or moved around. Like, yeah, like Which, up until episode four, we were doing one thing. It was pretty much about Rhaenyra's fighting. Like the king's trying to change tradition. Rhaenyra's doesn't want to get married. She doesn't want to deal with any of this. She doesn't want tradition, but she's also not willing to give up her status as a princess. Yeah. Like that was that well, was. The she's thing. not willing to give up her status as heir to the throne. That's right. the main thing because her she station didn't want to as princess tradition. doesn't matter. And that was the entire argument up to episode four when she finally just broke down and made her own arrangements with uh, Lanier. 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 That's it. Lanier. I thought it was Lanier. 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 Sir Lanier. Okay. Sorry. There we go. That also throws me off that everyone has wild and crazy names. Yeah. No, You've you been calling her Rhaenyra. It's, it's Rhaenyra. It's Rhaenyra. It's no, it's R not. No. Sure Rhaenyra is a different character. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Game of Thrones, man. There's Drogon, there's Dragon, there's Viserion, Viserys. <laughs> it's it's very it's a silly world we live in. Okay, but uh, Lord of the Rings have the same issue though. Yeah. They have all these wild and crazy names. But so um, like when I when you, when five shifted that, so many motivations. I almost felt like at five I was watching a new show. Yeah, and and that's that's a problem, right? They were trying to do the time skip, whatever. But even before that episode, the episode before the time skip, Kristen Cole kills a man for no reason in front of everybody. Like, that was one of the most out-of-pocket scenes. It didn't make any sense. It didn't help anybody. A lot of the motivations just aren't tracking. Like, they're not clicking as to why they're giving this advice then. A lot of it, it, it doesn't feel very well thought out at times. I'm still enjoying the spectacle of it all. I yeah. like the oh, last episode more it. than the last two before then as It's well. like watching medieval Jerry Springer. Like, it's... Yeah. it's because like in Game of Thrones, in the actual series, we did have the family turmoil, but we also had the Night Watch turmoil, and we also had other... This is just the family turmoil. Do you want to see yeah. a, a royal family just mess with each other which it's what over we were, and over? It's what we were sold, right? It's, yeah. it's about the Targaryen Civil War, which is literally just brewing. It's already starting to begin. Um, David Tennant's son, by the way, is who plays the oldest one of the, the white hair children. Fun oh, fact, he? there are two doctor related people on the show right now. Um, another another one that seems to completely spin his his, his motives, though, is Damon himself. He, Damon's just an agent of chaos, which it's funny, guys. Old Game dude, of Thrones. He, dude, he went from like, I'm killing my own wife and all this other stuff. Like, 
I'm going back and like I'm hiding out. Uh, I've I've completely screwed over the family. Ten years later, I have married. I care about my kids now. I just want to take yeah. them home. Like which what? a decade a decade happened. Which he was still being Damon. He was still being a selfish asshole. She wanted to go to the step zones. She wanted to have yeah. her kids with her family in in uh, over there at home. And he was like, no, I want to adventure and to plunder because he stopped. At th- when we meet Damon, all he wants is the throne. That's the yeah. only thing he cares about, right? And then through the four years fighting in the stepstone or stepstones, he comes back and he gives up the only crown he ever held. He he was the king of the narrow seas. He gives it up to be brought back into the family, and then he you know uh, almost sleeps with his niece um and then he goes to kill his wife and to do whatever and then we don't see him again until the wedding and that's when he's flirting with um uh lord corliss's daughter right so the a lot of stuff does happen to him he's not a good guy he's not a good guy at all oh no but e- even even though he, he appears to have more better motives i would say at this yeah. point more better that's a good proper word uh <laughs> but he seems to have better motives at this point uh it's still like shady because he went from like no i don't want to come back i'm gonna take my kids to where my wife wanted back home and then immediately he's like so rhaenyra what about this whole us getting together thing and we'll just murder people like, <laughs> yeah. like what <laughs> yeah which you know uh, i thought the way they did that was really awesome because i fully expected him to say let's kill lenor we have to kill him and murder him and at the end of the episode the reveal is lenor didn't die it, they killed the the guard he killed earlier is the one that was burned alive and lenor gets to go off to to be with his lover which is really awesome because lenor was a good dude i i like i, I like really, really i did like lenor and i do and I did like I, I did like that they even though it was an offhanded mention, once we started establishing that she had three bastard children, but she was fighting and pretending that they weren't bastard children. My first thought was, I get that you guys were going to have your lovers. Like I get that was the yeah. arrangement so you would both be happy. Why did you never just have the kids with Lenor? And that would yeah. have resolved all of this. And they did it as an offhanded mention that there was attempts. Yeah, they, they talk worked. about it in their little dialogue yeah. at the end that they definitely tried, but it just wasn't yeah. working, which, hey, biologically makes a lot of sense that it, it's not going to it's not going to go their way. And yeah, it, it, it's honorable. They, they, even they didn't have to go any deeper into it. And it, uh, they just needed to state that there was an attempt. And then for me yeah. as the viewer, I'm like, OK, so you didn't just completely ignore tradition. Yeah, no. They and and she literally try. says it, too. She, uh, they say that. And then later she's like, she's like, you know, on the few times we laid together, it, I really had hoped that this would have worked out like, yeah. like th- that's even the the thing they say after that yeah. so you know he's he's such an honorable person he obviously has his little fun he goes off with his little little boys all the time but he uh him and Renera as friends i really enjoyed that dynamic of them talking like her uh, lenor being the husband but uh that whole conversation they had like the last conversation he has with her before they fake his death is really really well done also the fact that you do feel like he loves his children. You do yeah. feel like they're not his kids. Everyone knows he's not his kids. It's absolutely hilarious how much they're not his kids. It's so funny. They're oh, such yeah. white kids, man. Like, it's <laughs> hilarious. It doesn't make any sense. But um, it's it's awesome that uh, he was treated the way he was. Because when he was reading his story, I didn't either to be another relationship antagonist. And then um, I was fine with the way Damon and Renera ended up together. Um, I was really happy with the turnout of that because now we have clear enemies. We need to go after the high towers because they're going to yeah. be taking the throne because king king mother hugger is dying all the time and Ot- the fact Dude, that he made okay, Otto can, the can hand we, of the king again i want to ask you this i legit thought he was going to be gone when we did the time skip Dude, I thought he what was going to be gone when he passed off? out. Then he passed out again. Then he coughed up blood. Then he has leeches suck his arm. Then he has one goddamn arm. Now he walks with one arm and a limp. Yeah, I, think, I was like, okay, well, because I knew the time jump was coming. I'm like, when we get to the time jump, he's going to be gone. Like, no, he's just like, now I'm really old. Like, what? <laughs> I am digging the show. I, If I have to pick, a, a, like, this is Game of Thrones. I know what I'm getting into. This is going to be a lot of political intrigue. We're not going to get a lot of fantasy battles. Uh, we are getting a lot of the dragons. I like having fantasy elements in here. So I knew what I'm getting into. The only complaint I would say I'm having with it is that the time jumps combined with how long we're spending in each time period. It's just, and maybe you're right. Maybe it's because I watched them back to back. So I'm immediately remembering what happened. I don't need the recaps. But 
it's it's just it's a little bit more difficult to follow than a standard Game of Thrones was back in the day when it was just straightforward storyline. Yeah, I'm not saying I can't follow it. That was my starter. I didn't. Un, I wasn't like, oh, I don't even know what's happening, Hassan. It's just that I, it, I'm not immediately. It's like kind of jarring for me to yeah. go from one scene to the next. The ten year jump where they're trying to reintroduce all these kids. Like at the time they did the jump, we had Aegon, we had Rhaenyra has no kids. And I think I think at the time, uh, uh, Al, uh, uh, Allison, Allison had two. Allison is that was pregnant. She had two, time. I think. But did they have two when she was pregnant with the third? I think she already had the she already had had the second one. Okay, but what I'm yeah. saying is, we then jump ahead, and now there's a whole bunch of kids whose names I got to figure out. And obviously, they're not the same actors because they were babies, and now they're adults. <laughs> oh, kids, you know. And that was a whole other element to it. Yeah. What did you think about the scene with which of the kids where he went off, took the dragon, then had his eye cut out? That whole thing. Insane. Like the spectacle of the size of that dragon and the kid. Yeah. Incredible. And then he like kind of snaps. He goes from this like being bullied, kind of sniveling little shit to like being kind of powerful. He walks back in that room, very villainous, like very villainous in his intent. Yeah. And oh, you went, you went to murder the bastard children. Like I'm just here to yo, kill him. And, and, and that fight scene was sick. Like yeah. it was terrifying. Like you're going to kill him. You're going to kill him. And I was like me me and my friends were watching and we were cheering when he cut out his eye because we hate oh, the yeah. kid obviously he's a little piece dude of i will say this though that kid has more honor than his mother when he yeah. literally steps forward and he's like no it, like it, this is this is what i was deserved like yeah i got the said, dragon. an eye for an eye i'm taking the dragon which is crazy because power wise that's like it's like a country saying well we're gonna take one of your nukes to the united states we'll have that well, now because it's it, and it's the biggest dragon it is the most powerful dragon it's a big deal that he has it yeah. that was an incredible scene an incredible spectacle i was i was really enamored by it and the whole fight scene was was awesome done and then like the king fight where when oh my god when allison goes crazy and tries to fight Rhaenyra, tries uh, to stab her i was like this is awesome but I, yes. I loved Rhaenyra. i loved Rhaenyra's comment now everyone can see you as yeah. i see you yeah, everyone sees you for what you are. And it's like, damn. That's my that's Millie Alcock speaking through Emma, Emily de Arce or whatever her name is. I, d I don't know her name with the top of my head, but Damon's wife, which was Lenore's sister. Yeah. Lenore's sister. I, I don't remember her name, but she, yeah, but, she but died. When they like were going to cut her open doing the C section like they did to the original wife way back in episode one, and her answer was no. No, no, Fuck no, no, you. no. I'm going to go burn both me and the baby. Like, <laughs> yeah. She said, I'm going to die on my own goddamn turns. And it was uh -huh. badass. She said, Dracaris and burned. Yep. Uh, which is, it was very sad because you can tell the dragon was like, I don't want to do this, mom. Uh -huh. like, you got to do it, mom. And then he I, burned I her alive. Yeah. Uh, it was super sad. And uh, like, I love that Rhaenyra's family is going to include those kids now, too. Um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this whole story plays out. But, you know, you have your your players. It's the the greens versus the blacks is what Isaiah was telling me. Is the high towers are the greens. The blacks are the step zones, Lord Corliss's family. And they're going to be they're going to wage war. Um, this is this is when the Civil War is truly going to begin. And really see um, at the rate we're going, maybe we'll get to episode 10. They'll be like in season two. <laughs> I'm, you know, honestly, like I. I know you prefer like the fighting and that stuff. I, I think I've had a healthy amount of action. Like I, I've not been craving more action in this show. I've been no, no, perfectly I, I, content with it. I think this is a good balance right now because you're not going into the show expecting medieval fighting. And if you are, then that's a mistake. And I'll admit when I first started up, I was only remembering the big wild moments in Game of Thrones. As I got into this, I'm like, no, this is Game of Thrones. This yeah. is, it's a Game of Thrones. It's not sword fighting and stuff like that. That's a different show. But I'm just saying, because you're saying we're going into the Civil War, I'm saying, no, I think we're going to get to the end of the season, and that's going to be season two. Yeah, which, fine by me. That sounds good to me. That, that'll be a, a great jumping off point. They did a really good job setting up and recreating this world for us, bringing us back into it. And um, yeah, my biggest issue with the show, I don't have an issue with the flash forwards as much. I've been uh, keeping up with everything. Uh, <sighs> son of a gun. It, oh, my camera overheated, Ben. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and finish your statement. We'll close out the episode. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, cool. Like, sounds like you're wrapping yeah. up anyway, so. Look at Benny's face, and, and I'm talking. Oh, look, it's me. I'm Hassan. Uh Yeah, guys, so uh, my biggest <laughs> issue is going to be not the not the pacing. It's going to be the continuity issues. Allison is never shown to be a loving mother, and that can't suddenly become her thing. And Kristen Cole was never shown to be an aggressively honorable man. So yeah. it's also crazy that all of a sudden that matters a lot to him. Worth him killing over. So those are my two biggest issues. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to see where it's going to go. At this point, I'm way too like invested. Even if I was disliking it, I probably would have just wrapped it up because these episodes are like an hour and 15 minutes a pop. You know what I mean? Like I've got almost eight hours of watching the show at this point. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah. yeah, this is just the opinions of two casual House of Dragon fans. Uh, we're not the deep divers who have read the books, but this is what we've thought about episodes up to this point. If you want this to be a weekly show, let me and Hudson know, and we'll try to get back to properly watching this on time. If you're wondering what happened, the answer is really simple. We realized the shows were airing Sunday, so we kept trying to watch them for Monday, but we didn't get it done in time, and then it'd get pushed till Friday, and then we were like, well, crap, we should just watch the Sunday episode, and they just that cycle just kept happening. <laughs> Benny didn't get it done in time. I watched well, it every what happen- Sunday. <laughs> well, because what would happen is like, oh, we're bumping it to Friday. I'll just watch it by Friday. Then Friday would roll around and we'd be like, well, why don't we just, why don't we watch all the way to Sunday and we'll watch it on Monday? Well, it finally, I finally got in the loop of doing that. So I just was always out of sync, it seemed like. So anyway, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time right here at Absolutely Marvel NDC.